Did you know Australia and Chile are apparently trying to take over the world and take down China with it? Okay, I will stress, I'm a little bit skeptical. So let's hear out the video first before we finally decide if this is complete nonsense or not. This is the island of Uto in Sweden. To many, this island may seem just like any other island. It's filled with a lot of normal plant life, a few docks for people to visit, and even a few tourists pop up here or there. There should be nothing special about this island. But as it turns out, this island may be responsible for a lot of our modern world and the future global superpowers in the coming decades. Jose Bonifacia Andrada was a geology professor at the University of Coimbra in the year 1800. But in his spare time, he traveled around Europe studying rocks. I don't know if the guy said Canberra or Coimbra. And one day on his travels, he stumbled upon an island with a small iron mine that was operating nearby. So he ventured into the mine and found a very strange mineral. It was somewhat clear with a yellow and whitish tint. It was also fairly brittle and it didn't really seem to have any special properties. So that rock, which he called Petalite, got put away in a Swedish laboratory where it was not touched for another 17 years. That was until Swedish chemist John Jacob Berzelius and his student Johan August Arfwedsen decided to analyze the mineral. And what they found was an element that the world had never seen before. It was an element that behaved very similar to potassium and sodium. However, this element was much less soluble in water, and it seemed to be more solid than them as well. And so they named this new element after the Greek word lithos, meaning lithium. stone. And we now know that element today as lithium. Are we talking about the rise in electric cars and vehicles? Uh, and Australia's got a lot of lithium, apparently, and maybe and Chile does as well. This is where it's going. I didn't think this was where it's going, but I think now this is where it's going. So when there is a new discovery in a field like chemistry or physics, it usually takes many years before we find a practical application for it. And if you have studied history at all, you probably know that there is one thing that drives technological innovation more than any other factor. The thing that drives science and technology forward faster than any other thing is not education, it's not freedom, it's not the economy, it's not a government policy, it's not even a scientific research fund. Well, if it aren't those things, then what is it? Well, if you want to innovate at a faster pace than any time in human history, then go to war. You see, up until the 1940s, lithium didn't really have a purpose. There were a few lithium mines that were active in the world, but lithium was only used for basic things like ceramic bowls and for the treatment of mania in a few small areas in Europe. But when World War II came along, lithium started being mass produced because it was a vital part of greasing the engines of fighters and bombers. Wow. But. Wow. I, you learn something new every day. I didn't have a clue about lithium being used for that. That is not even something I think about because the only time I think about lithium is in batteries. And that's, that's all I know lithium for. But it wasn't until after World War II ended and a new colder war began that lithium would begin to become a massive part of humankind's history. That's because this little element would play a vital role in developing humanity's most infamous invention. As it turns out, when you apply quite a lot of heat and bombard lithium with subatomic particles called neutrons, you get this. Oh, no. A thermonuclear weapon. The most destructive thing that humanity has ever created was spawned because of that little rock that was discovered in Uto, Sweden, just 150 years beforehand. I, I, I wouldn't have even known. I wouldn't have even known that it was lithium. So it's gone from, from used in the airplanes and then bombs, basically. Oh, wow. 
And what soon followed was a nuclear arms race between the Soviet Union and the United States. Over the course of the next three decades, the demand for thermonuclear bombs skyrocketed, and so did the demand for lithium. The Soviet Union and the United States would go on to create over 70,000 nuclear weapons during the Cold War and detonate 1,747 of them to see their effects on our planet Earth. And because of this nuclear armament, lithium began being mined all around the world. So I don't know if anyone else has seen, but this was in the news a while ago uh, looking at Chile. And I assume that's why um, it's Australia and Chile, because Chile are a, a huge mining, uh, have huge mining facilities for lithium. Um, but what they found is because you need a lot of water for lithium, uh, it's basically taken the water away from all the farms and 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 the the land to the side of it that people are now struggling to struggling to survive. Uh, you know the the lack of being able to farm and 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 get crops basically. The United States became the largest producer of lithium up until the 1990s, when the United States began to disarm its nuclear arsenal. And so the 2000s came along, and the demand for lithium completely dried up. The industry was completely dead. But then, this happened. So, three things. A mobile phones. An iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. These are not three separate devices. This is one device, and we are calling it iPhone. Don't do iPhones, guys. Just, just don't do iPhones. Android all the way. <laughs> In 2007, the iPhone was released. You see, as it turns out, lithium was a very special element because it was extremely good at one thing, making very light, rechargeable batteries. Sony released the first rechargeable lithium-ion battery in the early 1990s, but it wasn't until the mass adoption of the smartphone and laptops that lithium became popular again. And to put this into perspective, lithium usage globally has increased by 600% since 2007. And this is almost entirely thanks to lithium batteries inclusion into smartphones and computers. But that's not the full story, because two other industries have been growing alongside the age of smartphones that also rely on lithium in order to succeed. I'm trying to think of the other two. I would assume the other one is vehicles, as in cars. Um, Oh yeah, a little story for you. We have just we've just put uh, a down payment on an electric car. Uh, yeah, and a Cupra Born is coming our way. Exciting, I know. Uh, but I can't think of what the other one would be. So if there's three lithium batteries for this car production, what's the other one? And those industries are the electric car industry and the energy industry. Electric cars need lithium batteries to run. And as we all know, the electric car industry has gone from non-existent mm. just 15 years ago to now having about 3-5% to ownership of all cars on the road in the world. The renewable energy industry has also experienced a similar boom of having rapid exponential growth over the last 15 years, and that industry relies heavily upon storing the electricity from nah. windmills, solar farms, and so on. Yeah, so that makes sense. So if you don't have batteries to store the electricity, then it basically disappears, right? You need the huge storage to um, be able to capture all this energy so that it doesn't need to be used instantly. Uh, this is the problem I've got, for example. So I've got solar panels on my roof. Now, if I'm not using it at the moment, what I'm using at now, my computer, my lights, everything is all free because it's coming straight from those solar panels. But if I was a, wasn't at home, that electricity would be going back to the grid. Uh, luckily, it's not completely wasted, but it goes back to the grid. But it's wasted for me. I'm not making anything from it. So, yeah, you need these big battery storages so you can use that electricity later on. And they need to be big. In lithium ion batteries. But all of this insane growth of our modern smartphones, computers, cars and energy sector has come at a cost. You see, over the past two years, the price of lithium has increased by over 400%, oh, and this is wow. thanks to the inability of the supply to keep up with the demand. The world's lithium industry was not ready to keep up with such- 
Sorry if you can hear footsteps, by the way. Uh, that is Jet the Labstone. Sorry, this is normal household. <laughs> An increase in demand, and so in 2022, we began for the first time to see lithium shortages around the world. This led to a lot of things, like increased prices for electric cars, the inability for smaller companies to obtain lithium, and this also made renewable energy more expensive. And so, that is why several nations around the world have begun focusing in on trying to become the largest producer and new king of the lithium industry. I mean, let's think about this. Whoever controls the lithium will be able to control the current and next generation of our economy and our energy supply. Maybe this is the thing, isn't it? It's gone from having the most gas and coal to now having the most lithium. That's where the power now lies. Uh, that's an interesting thought. And I'm sure you're gonna get more corruption uh, whichever way it goes. And well, that brings us to today. Currently, the biggest producer of lithium in the world is Australia, as they produce about 45% of the world's lithium. This is thanks in part to private industry and governmental focus on trying to grab a hold of the industry many years before any other nation made any attempt. That means that as of right now, there's a good chance that Australia could become the controller and superpower of the lithium industry for years to come. Isn't that incredible? Australia have gone from these huge producers of, uh, well, uh, mining coal, huge producers of coal, uh, to now being the huge producers of lithium. You know, they, no wonder why Australia is seen as being such a rich country, because they've got the resources that everyone needs. China, on the other hand, controls about half of the world's lithium processing and production plants in the world. However, they mine substantially less lithium than Australia. But across the Pacific Ocean Chile. exists something that might change the entire industry. This is the Atacama Desert in South America. Let's take a look at the ground here. <laughs> Bone dry. Well, as it turns out, this is actually the driest place on the planet. In huh. fact, the Sahara really? Desert, known for getting almost no rainfall, gets seven times more rain than the Atacama Desert. I bet you didn't know that. I certainly didn't know that. I bet 99.9% .9 of people that may watch this video didn't know that. But it is here, in a place with no water or life at all, that may soon become the center of the world's technology. That's because the Atacama Desert may hold up to half of the world's lithium in its bone-dry crust and also in an easily extractable form as well, making it very likely that this desert may turn into the largest lithium extraction field in the world. In fact, many have deemed this desert the Lithium Triangle as an area shared between Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile have the highest density of lithium on the planet. And because of this, many other countries and companies have already taken notice. The American company Abermurl has already bought up much of the lithium production in Australia and Chile and plans to expand its operation in the Lithium Triangle. The South Korean company Pop Hang on, let me just make a note of this for my stocks and shares. What was that company called? They're gonna grow. Albemarle. Albemarle? Something like that. Stocks and shares. I'll take a look in a minute. The South Korean company POSCO is building an $830 million lithium plant in the Atacama Desert, and there are more than a dozen other massive lithium extraction projects currently being bid on and constructed within the Lithium Triangle. And this rush of companies flooding into the Lithium Triangle has led to it being called a white gold rush of the 21st century. But again, that's not the full story. Because as was the case with the gold rush, the United States West Coast may soon be home to the next generation of mineral prospectors. This is a postcard from the 1950s of the Salton Sea in Southern California. This area was known as a resort town filled with tons of tourists, families, and travelers. And well, this oh. is the Salton Sea 
today. Over the last 70 years, this once rich seabed has dried up pretty substantially since, well, the postcard was made. And as it turns out, during all that time, underneath all of that water existed an abundance of dried up lithium. Currently, there is only one lithium mine operating in the entire United States. See, this is the fear, isn't it? Um, in a place like that, now, it may not be the same situation at the other lithium mines, places like Chile and Australia. But imagine you have a, a possibly a thriving location um, with with families and, 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 and businesses and everything. And then all of a sudden, they realize there's lithium there. Uh, or whatever future resource there might be. And lithium is money. <sighs> yeah, that might happen to more places, I think. But over the last two years, companies like General Motors, Berkshire Hathaway, and about a dozen others have already bought up the rights to lithium reserves in Nevada and California in hopes of creating their own lithium extraction fields. So where is this all going? And how will all of this affect you and the economy going forward? Well, the first thing worth noting is that lithium and a handful of other elements are following a similar trajectory to that of oil in the 19th and 20th centuries, meaning that we will likely see an increasing demand for it in the coming decades. The second thing is that lithium might soon be the most important factor in our energy infrastructure going forward. With the cost of renewable energy going down and the price of oil going up, lithium ion batteries might soon be how we power humanity at scale. In fact, the Victorian Big Battery in Australia opened up just a few months ago and is already supplying over 50,000 homes with a consistent source of electricity, although it did have a minor setback with a fire at the facility. Another thing is that we are already beginning to see the geopolitical turmoil being caused by the hunt for battery technology, as countries like China have already begun buying up mines in Africa, which has come with its own controversy. And some American companies have also done the same as well. And well, because China right now is heavily reliant upon Australia's lithium production, there has already been a conflict over Australia and China gaining control and bidding on all the nearby lithium assets. And well, as we saw from China's ban on Australian coal just two years ago, a vital resource being cut off from a big country like China can have global economic effects at a large scale. But I do have a separate video about the Australian-China <laughs> coal war on my channel already, so check that out if you wish. But at the end of the day, if countries like Australia, Chile, Bolivia, Argentina, and the United States keep investing heavily into their own lithium industries, they may soon be the energy and, well, battery suppliers of the world. But the interesting thing is, though, actually, is how long did the energy from coal and oil and things, how long did that last? Um... The question is, how long in the future will the lithium production last? And then what do we go on to then? That, that would be my worry. Not something I really need to worry about in my lifetime, of course. But maybe not. Maybe lithium is not the battery of the future. There are other companies investing heavily into redox flow batteries and zinc batteries that could potentially outperform the lithium ion batteries going forward. And maybe the world will be scrambling to buy up zinc mines instead of lithium mines in 20 years. Who knows? There's also the problem of producing the electricity in the first place, as that is arguably more important than the battery. But you're going to have to stay tuned for that video. And subscribe and hit the notification bell. Well, there you go. Hit like and notification bell and all that. It's an interesting subject, and it is interesting how Australia have had the coal, and now they've got the lithium. So... I think Australia financially is going to stay pretty wealthy on the whole. Um, but how long will lithium last for? That's the question. It's exciting times. It's the, it's the dawn of a new age, as they say. Uh, and it's fascinating. And at the end of that video, they talked about how obviously Australia and China are battling it out to, to get the lithium mines in places like Africa. Is that going to raise tensions between Australia and China? They're already at a high state at the moment. Is it going to get worse? That's the question. But Australia has the advantage, right? And those countries like Chile, Argentina, etc. Um, they've also got the advantage. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something new.
I'll make sure you like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.